Well, folks, it has been well over a year since I last created a 10 reasons to root your phone video. And the truth of the matter is that I nearly didn't create one at all this year, mainly because it's been so long since I've actually used a phone that was rooted. But then just recently I thought, I kind of want to see what the rooting world is up to and assess whether it's something worth doing. And so I actually went ahead and unlocked root access on my Pixel 9, which is running the latest Android 16 developer preview. I actually did it using the kernel SU method this time around, not Magisk, and I'll explain why a little later on, but a huge thank you needs to go to Rajashi from PopMods, because he provided me with a bunch of support along the way, and he actually runs a Telegram channel, which he posts verified and open sourced app recommendations to, as well as root modules, so I'll link that below in case you want to check it out. But with all that being said, I've gone ahead and put together a list of 10 incredible reasons to root your phone, all of which are working with Android 16 as of the making of this video. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, let's start with the Pixel Launcher Enhanced module, which as the name so helpfully implies, unlocks a bunch of really handy customization options for the Google Pixel Launcher itself. And if you've been around for a while, then you'll know just how much I despise the stock Pixel Launcher for its complete and utter lack of customization options. But with Pixel Launcher Enhance installed, it makes the experience so much better. So you can enable this double tap to sleep gesture. You can increase your home screen grid size layout to up to 10 by 10. You can hide this unsightly search bar widget from the dock, and you can even add a clear all button to the bottom of the recents patch. The only issue is that right now, this option that's supposed to let you hide the at-a-glance widget, it does not work with Android 16. But thankfully, the Smart Spacer app does work for this purpose. And so using that, Pixel Launcher Enhanced and the Pixel Launcher Mods app, that's how I was able to create my favorite home screen setup with the stock Pixel Launcher itself. Next up is G Photos Unlimited. And folks, this module alone could well be more than enough of a reason to root your phone. As the name suggests, with this module installed, it actually unlocks free and unlimited photo and video backups in their original quality with the Google Photos app. Yep, you heard that right. You just install the module, reboot, and that's it. When you open Google Photos and tap your profile picture, you'll see that it says that you have unlimited account storage. And if you tap on that, you'll also see this text here that says this pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos at no charge. Seriously awesome stuff. Then we've got Data Backup, which is an open source root only app that lets you back up and restore app data way more reliably than any built in method allows for. And if you've ever gone through the process of setting up a phone only to discover that all your transferred apps have not only logged you out, but haven't retained their data either, well, Data Backup is the solution. With the app open, you get a bunch of options, but it's this Backup Apps option that I'm the most interested in. With that open, you then just select any app that you want to back up then tap continue, then continue again, and then a third time. And with that, the backup process will begin. Once complete, you tap on finish, and that's it. You can then use those backup files to restore all of those apps and their respective data to their exact state on whichever device you're wanting to restore them on, as long as it's also rooted. Hands down, a must have tool for anyone with a rooted device. After that is an app called LibrePods. And man, if you're in that niche subset of users who use AirPods with an Android phone, then this is an app that you are absolutely gonna want. With the app installed and root access granted, anytime you then connect to AirPods, you'll see this fancy pop-up interface which shows you each earphone's battery level, as well as the battery level for the case. And then if you jump into the app, you can also switch between noise control modes, you can customize the press and hold actions, and the app even includes a bunch of widgets for your home screen. It essentially just makes your AirPods work how they should. Then we have a super simple but very useful module called Anti-Brightness Change. And hands up if, like me, you find it super frustrating whenever you open the camera app or the QR code scanner app, only to be blinded by the display's brightness getting cranked up to the max automatically. Well, you just install the Anti-Brightness Change app, enable it via LS Posed, and bam, problem solved. Now no app will change your system brightness automatically. All right, real quick, before we press on, just wanted to take a moment to talk about this incredible little device called the Tick Note, and a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, Mobvoi, for sending it over. But if you haven't heard of it, this tiny little thing is actually built to make capturing and organizing audio ridiculously easy. You just press and hold this button and it'll start recording. There's even a little display here that lights up so you know that it's working. But here's what's awesome. If you've got the companion app open, you'll see that it actually transcribes your audio in real time. Once done, the app can then generate summaries, it can create mind maps, and there's even this amazing shadow AI tool that can pull out key points automatically or even conduct deep research on the topics discussed in the recording. 
Oh, and everything also syncs to the web version so you can access your recordings and transcripts from your computer. On top of that, the Tick Note can also record phone calls. You just flick this little switch, stick it to the back of your phone using the included MagSafe holder and adapter, and it'll then capture both sides of a call really cleanly. Basically, if you ever find yourself in situations where taking notes isn't practical, but you don't want the complexities that come from using your phone to record audio, then the Tick Note is the tool for you. Check it out using the first link down in the description below. All right, halfway down the list, and if you're a big Reddit user and you're fed up with the countless amounts of ads on show throughout, then you gotta check out Redditant. With the app installed, you just enable it within the LS Posed app, and that's it. Now, whenever you're browsing Reddit, you won't see promoted posts, you won't see comment ads, and you'll even get some additional perks, normally only available to premium users. Now, if you don't have a rooted phone, then you can try a hand at enabling it via Shizuku and the LS Patch app, but the developer makes no guarantees that it'll work, so just keep that in mind. Then, speaking of blocking ads, if you're looking for a system-wide solution, then Remailwack is one of the best that I've ever come across. You literally just install the module via your root manager app of choice, then reboot your phone, and that's it. You'll now see no ads anywhere, which just makes for such a clean user experience. After that is WA Enhancer, and this is a module that basically puts WhatsApp on steroids. And I mean, where do I even begin? Like we get this new panel of quick shortcuts up here, which gives you access to a ghost mode, for example, essentially making you invisible and hiding your read receipts across the entire app. You can also create chats with any number without having to first add them as a contact. And those are just the default options. If you then open up the actual WA Enhancer app, you get customizations galore. So you can separate your individual chats and group chats into separate tabs. You can disable those pesky meta AI functions. You can also hide various tabs, like I never use the updates or communities tabs. So boom, they're now gone. And there are countless more options on top of those. So it's absolutely an app worth exploring. Second to last is a super simple module called Flag Secure Disabler. And if you've ever run into a situation where you're trying to capture a screenshot, but the app that you're capturing blocks you, leaving you with a blank screenshot, well then this is the module for you. You just install it via your root manager of choice, making sure to follow the instructions as you do so, then you reboot, and that's it. Now you'll be able to take screenshots of any app that you so desire, easy as you like. And last, but absolutely not least, the final reason that you should consider rooting your phone is that it is actually still possible to use Google Wallet and other various apps that normally stop working when you've got a rooted phone. And this is actually the reason that I used the kernel SU method this time, because from what I've been told, Magisk is becoming harder and harder to hide these days, whereas kernel SU still seems pretty reliable. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through the process of rooting your phone in this video, but if you are looking for guidance in that area, then let me know if you'd like me to make a video at some point in the future. But that being said, if you do already have a rooted phone, then I thought I'd give you a very brief overview of the process that I used to get Google Wallet working again. You need to start by downloading three modules, which I'll link to below. This Tricky Store OSS module, then this Tricky Add-on module, and then finally this No Hello module. Once you've downloaded those, we need to come into our Root Manager app of choice. Again, I'm using the Kernel SU app, but with that open, we then need to come over to the Module tab, then tap Install, then find and select the Tricky Store OSS module and let it install. Once that's done, before we reboot, we'll come back, then tap install again, then this time select the tricky add-on module, and again, let it install. Now we'll tap on reboot. Once your phone has rebooted, we then wanna unlock, then open up the kernel SU app again, come over to the module tab, and you should now see this tricky store OSS module, and we just wanna tap to expand it. Then we'll tap here where it says open. Then from here, we'll tap the menu icon, then select all, then we'll again tap the menu icon and tap deselect unnecessary, then we'll tap save. Once done, we'll tap the menu icon again, then tap set valid key box, then we'll hit save again. Then with that done, we'll come back into the kernel SU app, tap on install, and then install that third module that we downloaded called no hello. We'll reboot and wait for the process to complete. And then once that's done, the only other thing that we need to do is open up the Google Wallet app, then swipe it into our recents, tap here, then tap on app info. And we just need to come down to storage and cache and then tap on clear storage. And you'll obviously need to repeat this same process for any other apps that were previously broken. But that's it. You can now open up any of the previously broken apps and they should work perfectly. Now you still need to tread carefully, of course, because who knows what patches Google and other app developers will push in the future that might break this workaround, but it does work at the time of making this video, which is fantastic. 
And so there you have it, 10 reasons why I think rooting your phone is something still worth doing. Definitely feel free to let everyone know of any other additional root only apps or features that people should check out down in the comments below. But that's it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.